I guarantee that some of your emails are still landing in spam, even for the leads that have opted in. So if you want that to never happen again, I'm gonna show you all of my ninja secrets to keep your emails out of spam out of the promotions tab and marked as important. It's a five-step checklist and not a single thing on this list is obvious. I call it the LGJ deliverability protocol. And these rules are significantly different than the rules for cold email. And once I implemented this, we went from an average of 20% open rates to now getting over 50% open rates on our new email campaigns. Do you know why the best marketers in the world, like my friend Rabi Abuvala, have these long, annoying text blocks at the bottoms of their email, look how ugly and long this is. Well, it's not for legal protection. It's actually a deliverability hack. If you follow this channel, then you already know that email service providers like Google and Microsoft scan the text of each email and they look for specific words that sound like spam. But it could be really hard to send your marketing or promotional email to your list without using words like free or guarantee or sale. These are words that are natural when you're selling. But there's a way around this, and that's to decrease the density of these spam words in your email by increasing the volume of high trust words and phrases. And the fastest way to do that is by adding these big, long, boring blocks of terms at the end of your email that nobody is going to read. Now, if you want, you can actually copy my big, boring text block that I use in my emails, and it's really easy to copy. All you have to do is opt in using one of my links below, and I'll start emailing you. And then you can just copy what I do. Doing this is gonna massively reduce your email's spam score and allow you a lot more freedom with what you can write in your promotional email. But that does not give you full reign to go crazy in your email and still hit the inbox. You still need to be careful and monitor your spam score. I recommend running all of your email copy through the Email Guard content spam checker before sending any email. Try to get your spam score under 10 and that will increase your likelihood of landing in the inbox. Here's that spam checker. If you're an insider, you actually get free access to this tool and you can just copy and paste your text in here. This is actually a newsletter that we put out recently and it will give you a spam score down below. Now, the reason I use this instead of my previously recommended Mail Meteor is because you actually can see how many spam words there are and what your spam score is. And then it tells you what those spam words are. Now you can go in and try and remove and change as many as you can to try and get that spam score under 10. And by the way, if you want a full list of tools that I use to run my $600,000 per month agency, I've got that full list, including my personal discount codes down in the description. All right, checklist item number one, email copy. You're going to add a big, long, boring block of text at the bottom of your email campaigns, and you can even make the font small and gray to distract from it. Nobody's gonna read it. And then you're gonna run your email copy through the email guard spam checker and try and get your score under 10. Helpful? Good. Here's checklist item number two in the protocol. Now it's not much of a secret, but I still work with hundreds of email marketers and only about 10% of them are actually doing this. Doing this takes only two minutes and oftentimes it's the difference between you having to stop using your primary website or just press a button to fix it. Now bear with me, I'm gonna get a little technical for just 30 seconds. When you're sending emails from your CRM, you're typically using a domain that you provide and then an IP address that they provide. Typically it's a shared IP. It is their job to keep the IP address healthy and it's your job to keep your domain healthy. Now, if you give them your primary domain to send emails from and you send a bad newsletter, say you're celebrating Trump's election victory and your email list goes out to everybody in New York City, you're gonna get a bunch of spam reports and your domain health is probably going to have a 90% drop in domain reputation. Way to go. Now you can't send emails from your domain for another three months. Or you can do this instead. Create three subdomains and add them to your CRM like Go High Level as you see here. Subdomains have their own domain reputation score. And if one of them gets burned, all you have to do is switch it out with another one. And when you're sending normal emails from your CRM, you can actually send as your primary domain. So for example, you see go.leadgenj.com. When somebody gets my emails and I'm using go.leadgenj.com, they rarely ever see it. Here's how it shows up. So here's an email campaign that we actually sent out today. And as you can see, here's my big, long, gray block of text. And I'll show you some other secrets in here in just a little bit. But when I come in to see who this email is from, I see from Jay Feldman, j at leadgenj.com, but then it's actually signed by that subdomain, mail.leadgenj.com. Nobody clicks to see this and nobody cares. And as long as the subdomain matches the root domain, 
then you won't have any problems with deliverability. And guys, creating these subdomains is so easy. If you're using GHL like you should be, you can come to dedicated domains and just add new subdomains here. You just put them in, add a simple TXT record. Say I wanted to do test.leadgenj.com. You would just add this new domain, click add and verify, and then it's going to give you a really simple DNS record to add in your domain host, whether that's a Cloudflare or whatever you might be using. It will then authorize the domain for me and add those records for me. Now, I'm not gonna go through the whole step right now because I promise to keep this short, but adding these subdomains is really, really simple. And then once they're all added, they're verified, you've got the SSL issued, it looks like this. You can then come into domain configuration and actually choose which subdomains go to which use case. Here's how I like to set it up. My workflows and my one-on-one -on -one conversations, these are the ones that are going to have the lowest risk of being marked as spam. Make those one subdomain. For campaigns and bulk emails, I make that another subdomain. And you can actually add multiple subdomains and then change the frequency at which it uses those different subdomains. This can keep all your subdomains healthy and fresh and so you never land in spam again. The other thing you might wanna do here is set some default headers. A lot of people overlook this, but it can be very important. You'll just come in to set headers and then just set some defaults, your name and the email that it wants to default to. This can be very important for deliverability. Now I mentioned that it's their job to keep the IP reputation healthy and your job to keep the domain healthy. As you can see, these are on shared IPs. You can add a dedicated IP, I believe it's 60 bucks a month, if you're doing really high volume and if you don't wanna rely on somebody else's IP address to be healthy. All right, hope that technical stuff didn't bore you. Let's go to checklist item number three. The next item on this list is domain reputation. The domain that you're probably sending your warm emails from is your main domain or a subdomain on that main domain and you want to invest a lot more time and energy into this domain reputation than you would for a cold email domain. But how do you do that? Let's break it down into two separate parts, warming and protection. If you're already subscribed to the channel, then you're probably warming your emails on a tool that has free unlimited warming, like Instantly AI or Smart Lead. And as much as I love that tool, I also know that if you allow free unlimited warming, then you get some bad actors in your warmup pool. So for my primary domain, I don't mess around. To keep my primary domain warm, I use a tool called warmy.io. Now it's not cheap, but this is the highest quality warmup tool on the market, and you should only need to pay for it for your primary domain. I link one mailbox on my primary domain, and it's really not that expensive. It allows you to send up to a thousand warmup emails per day if you're doing high volume warmup. This simulates what your primary domain might actually do. And this tool also monitors your domain for blacklists and helps you run email placement tests all on autopilot. I also have a 50% discount code for this tool. It's in my recommended tools list down below. And just briefly on warmy.io, as you can see, I've sent 179 emails today, almost all of which landed in the inbox. It monitors my DNS records so I know all my DNS is set up correctly. And then you can do these email placement tests to see how your emails are actually delivering to real world mailboxes. Now, sometimes these end up in spam even though everything else is perfect. So you can do a deep dive into this detailed information and see if you're on any blacklists or what could, could be causing this. Usually it's nothing like in this case, it's a couple IP blacklists. It's probably something to do with the content of the email. I'm not too concerned. All right, now I wanna add one caveat. You probably don't need to warm up your primary domain. If you're a good email marketer and you're not getting reported as spam or having high bounce rates, which we'll talk about soon, but even if you don't warm up your primary domain, you still need to monitor the reputation and protect it. So here are the tools and tactics that we use to monitor domain reputation. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is connect your domain and all your subdomains to Google Postmaster. This is a similar process to connecting them to Go High Level. And if you're a Microsoft user, they have a Postmaster for you as well. Just go to postmaster.google.com, add your domain as well as your subdomains. You just have to authenticate your domain and then it will monitor your subdomains without you having to re-authenticate. This is the gold standard for any email expert. If you came to me and said, my emails are going to spam, the first thing I would ask for is access to your Google Postmaster. And now you can connect Postmaster right in Go High Level. So I never even have to come to this tool. Instead, I can just come into Go High Level, email services, Postmaster tools, You'll connect your Postmaster. It will have all of your domains already connected. And now you can quickly get a snapshot of your domain reputation, your spam ratio. And if you wanna dive a little bit deeper, you can view details and come in and see domain reputation. 
IP reputation, how many spam reports we're getting, spam feedback. This is a very, very helpful tool for a lot of reasons. But what Postmaster won't tell you is if you're on any domain or IP blacklists. Now, if you're already using warmy.io, like I recommend for your primary domain, you can use this tool to monitor for those blacklists. And you can also do this in email guard blacklist checks. So it will monitor your domains for blacklists as well as email blacklists, so looking for specific IPs. But if you're currently broke and don't wanna spend any money on a best-in-class tool, then you can go to MX Toolbox and check these blacklists for free just by typing in your domain. Problem is you'll have to do it manually each time you wanna check, and it's not so much monitoring as it is you proactively going in there. Now, as a member of my Insiders program, we're actually now giving free accounts on Email Guard. So you'll be able to log into your own dashboard and do all of this on your own. So that's one more reason to sign up for the Insiders program, which is my flagship program, link down below. But Jay, you just told me that subdomains have their own domain reputation. So do I need to warm up my subdomains and monitor them too? Well, we do monitor our subdomains using Google Postmaster and Email Guard, but we don't warm up our subdomains. All right, the last item on the list and arguably the most important, and now is when you're gonna learn some of those real insider secrets, so get ready to take some notes. Checklist item number five. I'm gonna show you how to keep your email list squeaky clean so that you don't get high bounce rates or a high complaint rate. Either one of these things will totally destroy your domain reputation so fast that you won't be sending emails right for months. I'm gonna walk you through a few of the secret settings and automations that I use to make sure that my list stays clean and I'm only emailing people that want to get emailed. And I'm gonna show you these settings on Go High Level, but they're likely available on any CRM that you're using. The first thing you're gonna do is come into your settings and business profile. Scroll all the way down and make sure that these two checkboxes are checked. Mark emails as invalid due to hard bounce and verify email address when first email is sent to new contact. Very important that both of these are checked. You don't want to continue trying to send emails to hard bounced emails and you want to verify the email address as soon as it comes in. It's really dirt cheap and if you don't see these options available to you, it's because your agency admin hasn't enabled it. So just reach out to them and ask them politely to enable that for your sub account. You can also take a screenshot of this to see what my other settings are and you're probably gonna notice something a little bit strange. This is on by default. Make email compliant by adding an unsubscribe link to your email. I keep this off and I'm gonna show you why in just a second. This is another ninja tactic. Most people who unsubscribe, they just wanna get emailed less. Not, not at all. They don't wanna be removed from all of your lists. But if you don't give them that option, then they're gonna click unsubscribe and then they're gone forever. So what we do is we manually add an unsubscribe link to all of our emails. And it's actually a form that lets them choose their email preferences. I'll show you how it works right now. So here's that email campaign that we sent out today. Now you'll notice a couple things here. My signature, it's a picture, it's fine. This delivers without any problems. My long, ugly block of text. And then my unsubscribe link at the bottom, which is not their default. Want to receive less emails or none whatsoever? Update your email preferences by clicking here. But when I click, it doesn't unsubscribe me automatically. It takes me to a form pre-filled with their email address, and then they get the option, hear from me often, hear from me less often, most important only, or unsubscribe. That form is then linked to an automation that will set their email preferences. And if you're interested in seeing how I built the forms and automations, all of that is available to you inside of my Insiders program. And you can actually just copy those things directly into your CRM if you're a member of the program. Next, you're going to want to set up these email automations inside of Go High Level. If you're using a different CRM, maybe they have a setting for this, you'll have to ask. But if you're smart using Go High Level, this is what you want to add email clicked, email opened, email marked spam, and then bounced email. These are four different automations that take different actions based on what my recipient is doing. So let's email clicked first. If somebody clicks on an email, I like to add a tag, email clicked. Now I know that person is an engager. They're engaging in my emails. Email opened, if they opened an email, they also get an email tag, and that way I can filter by who's opening the emails. Now most importantly, to keep it clean, if they mark it as spam, this is a different trigger. In the email event, email complained as spam. I wanna add a tag email spam and I wanna set them to DND for all channels. I don't wanna reach out to that person anymore. Next is an automation for bounced emails. So again, email event, bounced, mail gun only. We're then going to add another tag and then DND them specifically for email, not for all. This one's a little bit more advanced. It's an invalid email automation. So sometimes somebody will fill out a form and they'll use an email that is in 
invalid accidentally. They'll say .con instead of com, something stupid like that. I actually have a backend automation set up to screen those, fix them, and then send them an SMS to fix it. Again, available inside of the Insiders program. Finally, you're gonna to wanna to build a smart list. This way you're gonna send email newsletters only to subscribers who are active and who are not already in a nurture sequence. You don't wanna overwhelm somebody right away. This is gonna make sure that your emails are only going to people who are likely to open them. That way, they'll rarely bounce and rarely be reported as spam, which means they'll hit more people's inboxes more often. And if you're looking at your CRM and saying, Jay, I only have like 12 people who have opened an email in the last 90 days. Am I only supposed to email 12 people? No, you can get more people onto your active list by running a re-engagement sequence using a different subdomain and a different strategy. It's covered in my program. And by the way, if you're interested in learning how to write great nurture sequences and what automations to build inside your CRM to make tons of money with email marketing, it's all available inside of my Insiders program. Not only will you be able to master cold email, but you'll get the exact sequences and automations that we use to make millions of dollars a year with warm email. Now, let me show you briefly how to build that smart list. And I'm gonna do it from scratch with you so you can follow along. We're gonna come into our email contacts inside of Go High Level. We're gonna to come to more filters. We're gonna find email events. Last email opened date is less than 90 days ago. You can shift this how you want, but I suggest no more than 90 days. They also have a valid email. If you have a bunch of invalid emails, make a different smart list. As you can see, I have one here for unvalidated emails and then just validate them all in one shot. But this way you're only sending emails to valid people. Now I have a little bit over 14,000 in this list already. Let's stack it again. I want DND is not enabled for email. So this is my smart list. They've opened an email in the last 90 days. They have a valid email and they have not unsubscribed from email. Now I've got about 12,000 people in here, almost 13,000 people that I can send emails to where I have a high confidence that they're going to get opened and they're going to go through. You can then save this as a smart list and you can call it whatever you want, active subscribers. Now when you come in to do a campaign, you can just send to that smart list so you don't have to fight to find people every time you send an email campaign. All right, gang, I hope that was helpful. If you wanna know more secrets, make sure that you join the program. There's an active discount code right now that expires next week. Check the link down below and definitely watch the next video on this screen right now. Click that thumbnail. You're going to love it.